With me, I have Hillel Neuer, the executive director of UN Watch, a human rights group based in Switzerland. Mr. Neuer, thank you very much for joining us here on RT. Your group basically monitors the United Nations, but why does the UN even need monitoring? UN Watch is a non-governmental organization whose mandate is to monitor the United Nations according to the principles of its charter, essentially to uh, hold the UN accountable and to measure it by the artstick of its own charter. Many Israelis complain that Israel does not get a fair deal or a fair hearing by the United Nations. Would you agree? It's one of our issues that's important to us, is fighting anti-Semitism and also the discriminatory treatment of Israel. The UN's obsession with Israel doesn't only harm Israel, it doesn't only harm the peace process, but it harms the UN as a whole. It prevents the UN from being effective for human rights victims who never get their day of international attention. Why is the UN, to use your words, obsessed with Israel? Uh, the UN has been a strong champion uh, of the PLO uh, since the early 1970s. This was largely a function of the Soviet Union together with the Arab states started a campaign to uh, attack Israel and uh, hijacked many UN bodies. So you have uh, an enormous amount of the UN's attention is ostensibly devoted to helping the Palestinians. And have the Palestinians been helped? The Palestinians have not been helped. And it was Kofi Annan himself, the Secretary General of the United Nations, in his parting speech to the Security Council, said, what have all the special agenda items and special reports and special sessions on the Palestinian situation ever done to help the Palestinians? And the reality is very little. If you look in the past 30 years of all the resolutions and at the, at the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, it's something like 75% of all the resolutions are condemning Israel, ostensibly helping the Palestinians. The reality is the only thing they've done for the Palestinians is encourage a sense that no matter what happens, whatever mistake they make, whatever terrorism they may support, the UN will always be there uh, to encourage them and make them believe that no matter what they'll prevail. And it's only encouraged the most extreme forces in the Palestinian camp and has not helped the moderates. So why has the UN failed to help the Palestinians in any meaningful way? Well, the UN is a large organization and has many agencies that do good work. Unfortunately, a number of them are highly politicized. Uh, in New York, the General Assembly is highly politicized. The Human Rights Council is the same. They're mostly dominated by uh, third world countries from Asia and Africa, many of whom are not democracies and who have their own agendas, uh, which have very little to do with human rights. For example, the dictator of Libya, a uh, murderous regime, uh, was elected to the Human Rights Council. That that's, uh, that's a, a sad joke for the cause of human rights. Do you sense that the UN is in touch with what's going on here on the ground between Israelis and Palestinians? Which, which you have really are two separate things, and, and it's something that, that I've been able to see at the Human Rights Council. You have the real situation on the ground where you have Israelis and Palestinians that need help, and they could have help of international uh, interlocutors, uh, be it the United States, the European Union, or other countries, uh, or, the, or the UN, which could come in and help them. Uh, and try to bring them together and bridge their differences. Uh, you have a real situation with real problems. What happens at the UN too often is uh, something on a, on, a, on a level that is almost mythological, that is entirely divorced from reality. And I saw that once a couple of years ago, was in uh, June 2007, when Hamas was waging a bloody coup against the um, against the Fatah, the Palestinian Authority. And during that time, it was very nasty. Hamas was throwing people uh, off of rooftops. They were shooting people in hospital beds. And all this was happening. Israel, of course, had already withdrawn in the unilateral withdrawal from Gaza. There were no Israeli troops, not a single one in Gaza. had no involvement whatsoever with this, uh, this conflict. And in my earpiece, listening to what was happening in the UN plenary was they were attacking Israel, condemning Israel for human rights violations. So I think this this, this example captures what happens at the UN, that there are real problems, real people suffering, but the UN is sort of locked into an automatic mode where all they're doing is condemn Israel obsessively. Many Israelis have called for Israel to withdraw from the UN. Would you support such a move? And do you think it's realistic? It's not. Uh, it's, that's not a, a, a realistic option. Obviously, uh, theoretically, Israel could. Uh, I don't think Israel should. And I don't think Israel wants to. And I don't think it's in the interests of Israel or of the United Nations. Uh, Israel has, uh, was its creation. Uh, was sanctioned by the United Nations on November 29, 1947, when the UN called for a Jewish state, 
Uh, that term is used 30 times. It's kind of interesting that the Palestinian Authority has difficulty uh, accepting that. The resolution of the United Nations General Assembly, 1947, 30 times used the word Jewish state. Why do you say that the UN and its investigations are prejudiced against Israel? What proof do you have? The UN has the right and the duty to hold Israel accountable to its international obligations on a whole range of issues, whether it's the Palestinian issue, whether it's women's rights, whatever it is, just like every other country, Israel should be held accountable. What we object to is the political hijacking of UN bodies such that they're rendered ineffective to help millions of human rights victims around the world. If we take the example again of the Human Rights Council, now here's a body that is pledged to promote and protect human rights for victims around the world. Yet the fact that in 10 emergency sessions, seven of them have been on Israel, all of them one-sided, making no reference to Hamas terrorism, to Hezbollah terrorism, and only three sessions out of ten for the rest of the world combined. What it means is, it's not just absurd and outrageous, it means that victims in Darfur, victims of mass rape in Congo, victims of, uh, of repression in Zimbabwe, in China, around the world, never get a chance to have their, their day uh, in the international spotlight, which is needed to combat victims. Why is Israel still not able to have a rotating seat on the Security Council, whereas countries like Libya, Saudi Arabia, Iran, which have far worse human rights records, are? Israel was never admitted into the regional group that it, by geography, uh, uh, ought to belong, namely the Asian group. Its neighbors, Syria, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, belong to the Asian regional group. But because of the Arab state's objection to Israel, uh, they refused to let Israel join. And so Israel has never been able to join its regional group, Asia. Uh, and the result is that many of the elections for important UN bodies occur within the regional groups. There's sometimes an allotment that there'll be X amount of seats for the Asian group, for the European group, uh, for the South American group, and so forth. Uh, so Israel was denied access to uh, many significant UN bodies because of this system. Ten years ago, there was an important shift. Israel was admitted into a group which is called Western Europe and Others, the WEOG group, and includes uh, most uh, EU countries as well as the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, uh, and other uh, liberal democracies. And in the year 2000, Israel was admitted uh, in New York. And therefore, uh, theoretically today, Israel actually could be uh, potentially a candidate for the Security Council. Um, uh, however, the, uh, a subsequent question arises whether Israel would be elected, uh, and that's, and that's uh, far from clear. But it could happen one day that Israel would submit its candidacy and it would be uh, elected to the Security Council. The reality today is that the Islamic states are so... Uh, zealously opposed to anything that favors Israel, uh, even in the most benign way, that you would have almost 56 states determined to oppose Israel. And many of the dictatorships at the UN uh, automatically oppose Israel. Uh, countries like Zimbabwe, North Korea, and so forth uh, vote with the Islamic states uh, in their campaign. Uh, and so even if Israel were to submit its candidacy, it's not clear that it would be elected. Do you still support the existence of the UN? Is it still relevant in our world today? We believe the UN could be something else. We believe that the UN has an indispensable role in this world. There's, there's no replacement for the UN. If the UN didn't exist, we would have to create it. Um, and the UN, when it started in its early years, was very well respected by all countries. Um, and uh, its, uh, its mission was respected uh, by Israelis uh, as it was by Arabs. Uh, but in, in, in the past you know, several decades, um, it's been taken over by an extreme agenda. Hillel Muir, thank you very much for talking to us here on RT. Thank you. My pleasure.